called toxicity or toxic city. Darkness descends, the streets are foreboding, hooded gangs prowl, dim lights hide shapes in the shadows, the toxic city wakes. Masks abound around closed shops and stores, few cars emit poison gases and strangers, eyes down, pass each other. Winter draws near, the fear still lingers, the year has been like no others. The bodies piled up. The loneliness has eased, but memories. <sighs> memories. Remembering when things were fine, when we all lived together, trusting rightly or wrongly. But now, it's changed. The world is strange. The future remains bleak as we seek answers. Answers which aren't there because leaders don't care. And egos get in the way. Sanity and many suffered. The toxic city prepares for a long, dark winter. I do have a lot of guilt because I'm not really as environmentally conscious as I could be. So I didn't actually think I was the kind of obvious choice. Um, for this, but you know, when I kind of explained that, you know, Scott's reply was, well, no, I think that makes you a really good person to do this because it's not a, the event and the workshop, it wasn't about like, you know, how to live this perfect eco-warrior lifestyle, or it wasn't about like, you know, trying to preach or con convert people to a certain way of like living or uh, to, to, to be greener. I am one of those ex-bad guys. I was really struck by the workshop about the whole thing about the future is not fucked because it takes an enormous and impressively worthwhile stretch of the imagination to figure out how we unfuck it because it's really worth doing. Um, but for people of my age, um, you know, so what? <laughs> there is a relativity to fucking, an openness to possibility, a hope of sorts. They'll come, you'll come, it will, it will not end. We're fucked is binary, absolute, zero-sum, hopelessness. The future's fucked, you say. When I came to Aberdeen, obviously Aberdeen was, it was just after the downturn in 2014, so there was like a bit of a, there's definitely a bit of a shock, and I'd not seen the boom time, which was like maybe four or five years before. But it just struck me like thinking, if this like, this is not going to continue. And I was just so surprised that people thought we could it could just continue. And Speaking weird for me personally has been like a, a, a huge kind of turning point in my understanding of actually, you know what, there's so many cool and talented and interesting people in Aberdeen who are doing really great things.
he told me how much he earned. He said some people couldn't take a 5% pay cut. They pleaded with management. Their expenses were too high. Sinead scoffed when I told her, poor things. After he told me what I earned, I didn't pay him back for petrol money. <laughs> I'd said I would, 20 pounds. Sometimes I think I don't want to earn more money because I just spend it on stupid shit. More money, more carbon. Yeah, it's about oil. <laughs> I worship a crude god. Curse and rock, sick, slick, with that Old Testament kind of love. Nina this Nambi Pambi, turn your cheek so Abdi can give you a scalp. His love is skimmering blackness, suffocating petrol patriarchal darkness, hottering with holy hydrocarbons, young loons tuck swimming lessons in it, learn to hud their breath and split under the surface. I worship a smeak it god, dab his muckle want on my wrists, my throat, behind my lugs. I ging inside him, duke myself in his een. Afore I get the chance to droon, his gleg gabbit tongue waps ruin my neck. And I have never felt freedom like it. I ask fit why I'm say powerless. His laugh is fire on water. And fa tell you, he was powerless. I didn't hear his voice say much as I feel it smouldering behind my breast. If I was been free, my queen. It's just humankind as a god factory. Your eye churning out deities, then dark and fit to do with us. Fun we've grown our muckle and can swallow us. I worship a finite god. Enfa's flock was built to outlive him, despite Etlin to die for his sins. I came here five years ago and so the oil industry was totally new to me um, but just yeah I've come to understand how ingrained it is in Aberdeen and how normal it is you know and how people who work in the oil industry it's not you know they're not doing anything bad or it's not you know it's, it's kind of it's no different in a lot of respects from working in any other sort of industry it's just a job um, but I, I but the 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 prosperity of the area and people's livelihoods and house prices and everything is so bound up with the fate of the oil industry and I find that myself as well like I bought a flat in Aberdeen and now the value of my flat is tied up with oil price and uh, so yeah it, even myself that doesn't work in it I, I feel connected to it and I feel kind of ambivalent about its future. Sometimes there's an idea that it's either the environment or jobs. And so the idea of just transition is actually no, it doesn't have to be that dichotomy. You can have both and you can have you can have you can work to sort of maintain or enhance the environment and also provide good jobs. So it was just I kind of thought of it as like money and greed and this idea of like, you know boys who are like too young getting paid loads of much more money than they should and them just being stupid with it. I also, I think I was a bit resentful when I was growing up hearing about guys, like just young guys that would go offshore for two weeks and then they'd have two weeks back on shore and they'd just make all this money and like while they were on shore they would like, you know.
you know, just kind of hearing all those stories, and, I, and that I had this really, I had, from that I created this image of this. Um, Oh, I think I touched quite this, this, the, a certain kind of masculinity. We can't continue uh, burning fossil fuels, we can't continue burning oil and gas, which means we really can't continue exploring for more oil and gas and extracting it. Uh, this one is called Sink or Swim. The future is written in water. Torrential potentiality floods the collective body, demanding we make a choice. Parched eyes designed to drink sky learn to thirst after individualism, that single-use plastic life raft setting us adrift from each other. Will our bodies remember how we survived the first water, how we became something new to undo an ending? who gets to benefit from the transition. From whatever we transition to is fair and just, so these are distributed fairly. Where you could argue at the moment, as a, the oil industry, the, the, the benefits are not, they're not distributed evenly. Like, so highlighted how at one point you get somebody driving a high performance car, dri driving past people who are basically sleeping rough on the street. Because the oil and gas is so dominant in the northeast, and it sort of dominates a lot of our institutions and uh, even our dis political decision-making process. So, because everybody, you know, I know, we've all got friends or family who work in oil and gas, or, or we all know somebody. It's called not required back. It's a black spot. I mean, it literally was. Sometimes it's a black spot. You know, John Boland, black spot, not required back because people worked on a two-on, two-off rotor, that black spot was enough to make sure that you didn't get the call to say you were coming back. So this is called Not Required Back. I never knew him till I filled his bunk. My hair cropped tight into the wood, my wedding ring taped up or set aside. My father was a ruthless creature who extracted his capacity to care across the frontier of his manliness. A better man than me. He always came back squeaky clean, covering his tracks in a binge of hugs and holdings, a guff of aftershave with hints of booze from the spiders or the crypts. I mean, I think art has to reflect the, the current environment. So as, you know, as these things grow, the, the, this conversation will definitely and should be reflected, you know, in, the, in, in any kind of cultural movements. Often the oil industry talks about we're only providing we're only providing society what it what it needs or what it demands, and it partly that's partly true, but it's not like that's just a law of nature that people want to burn fossil fuels. It's designed that way. People are forced that way.
I will be the last of this line of precarious miners on the seething deep, rooted by the mark or the well stock to this macho license dislocated on the hamster wheel of time. Art has a role in create, you know, creating, changing people's imagination about what's possible for the future. Um, and in positive ways as well, often art can be kind of a protest against what's happening in the world. Shining now, a cobble door, with no trees, eternally remembering Aberdeen, surviving post petrol. Shining, licking, glossing, dying, deep, wanton wells, O oh, oily hell, deal in disguise, beautifully emblazoned, crude, shining, bewitching, sterling souls, snow white's poisoned apple, bedazzling, depleting, separating, heartbreaking, despairing. Shining Aberdeen, rising tall, hopeful, determined, stubborn, thrown. Aberdeen, artfully alive, post petrol sparkling city. I like seeing the change in the dark every day in the same place. I'm trying to work out where the moon goes every morning and evening. It feels oddly claustrophobic without it. I have some faith that everything is okay in some way. That we may have trapped ourselves in some system we can't get out of. Like a Chinese finger trap, the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. But I have some faith because I don't understand the world. And there never was a Garden of Eden. And we haven't destroyed anything because nothing was ever innocent or perfect. And we are part of it. And it's just constant change, change, change. And I'm here to watch. And we, like the moon and stars and clouds and wind, are just agents of change. <laughs>